Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Lindbergh. I'm Carissa. And we're from Broad Britain. That worked flawlessly. So you did great. <laughs> uh, this is my, I'm calling it my podcast now. I normally say our podcast. Ross is still absent. So this is my podcast about anything and everything off road. I'll say our again when Ross comes back. I'm not, I'm not that possessive. I'm willing to share. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. Uh, so for new guests, I've been telling them the fact Ross and I have never physically been in the same space. We started the podcast right before the pandemic with him in Connecticut, me in Kansas City. And then like all of the trips that we were going to be near each other have just been totally, totally scrubbed. Um, and so we just physically like we're internet friends, basically. <laughs> 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 Sounds kind of lame. So, um, you know, our friends are internet yeah, friends, so especially it's coming fine. from pandemic, yeah. right? We've all been connected virtually, <laughs> at least luckily we have that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like more, uh, accepted. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. In the past it was functional, but like nobody, nobody talked about it. So, um little personal update for me is uh nothing literally nothing since the last show um where i i'm gonna make the same plea i made last week if you have someone you want us to talk to and we haven't talked to them yet shoot me um a message uh a comment anything i got a, a bunch from last week so that's fun to to go the same way i approach you guys is to uh do that cold open and be like hey I think we kind of know some of the same people. <laughs> Do you want to come talk on the internet with me? <laughs> so yeah, shoot me a line if you're ready for that. And now we're just going to talk about you guys. So professional photographers mm -hmm. by day. Uh, by and day and night, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Early morning, just whenever they need us. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I did a content trip back in May and literally all we ever did was wake up crazy early and shoot golden hour in the morning, uh -huh. travel to the next destination, cram food in our faces before evening golden hour, and then pause to wait for that blue light. Yep. Yeah. And then immediately go to bed because we were waking up crazy early the next day. So that sounds about right. Yeah. 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 So I, I think I'm going on my, I'm trying to think here. My, I think yeah, next year is going to be my my fifteenth year professionally. Wow! And Carissa's I going on eight. on eight. Yeah, yeah. at least yeah. freelance. Yeah, yeah, full freelance since that's that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> so we we have a um, I guess I'd call him a regular guest on the show. His name is Joel. He lives down in Australia, and uh -huh. he's an automotive photographer. So like I get stuff from him all the time about uh -huh. like he was just posting something with a, a whole room full of like R thirty two. GTR race cars at yeah. one of the shops down there. And I was like, I just love having these people in my feeds because I get to see amazing things all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I always tell people that I shoot the boring new cars. Okay. And she shoots the really old and like really, really expensive, like cool stuff. Yeah. Like the vintage stuff, the stuff you see go on Monterey for like millions of dollars. It's okay. Yeah. Like and that, I mean, Instagram adds up that way. Like, the, the first things at the top there we got we got gts up top we got mclaren's like that makes yeah. sense for those are Lindbergh's. <laughs> yeah yeah they're beautiful oh rs 200 <laughs> <laughs> that one's not new that one's old the rs mm, every so often i get to shoot old cool stuff but it's a lot of times it's like yeah. a lot of new stuff that uh yeah I get we get i get approached by yeah. elite manufacturers and we go from there which are really fun because then it's like a production they have like creative direction and it's yeah. like auction stuff that i do for like some of the different companies it's like you know let's go to location and gorilla it and good luck with permit <laughs> not in the budget um but some oh, of the no. other stuff you know it's it's not you have it like things locked down and all that good stuff the this mirror is... story is really interesting though carissa you should oh okay you should really should quickly I... do the mirror story okay. not that with the white mirror the, the um, white one okay yeah. I love I love that it's not that one. There's more than <laughs> one. <laughs> so this one up here? Yep. Yeah, so okay. that one was actually found in a shop, like an industrial shop in the Bay Area. And um, basically the car was left there. A girl had it for college and that was her car to drive to Berkeley um, College. Up but in, uh, in college Bay. in the 70s. Yeah, the 70s. When this was brand new. Yeah, brand new car. That's when she drove to school, got in like a fender bender and had it sit at a shop. The guy was going to fix it. And then she started writing like um, fraud checks and couldn't like pay for the stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> crazy. Um, but yeah, however many years later, I don't even know, 20 plus probably. They're like 30. 30 like that, sitting yeah. in a shop. And then a guy found it and he fully restored it. So if you scroll to the very top, 
you'll see it completely polished. The guy completely just stripped all of the paint off. Um and it looks incredible and they restored so it and everything it? it's up there somewhere very top very top oh there it is That's oh shiny. my lord yeah so, so yeah he hand polished that just to show the condition of it and like how well the repair was because the repair was in the front yeah but yeah just wild to know that a girl drove that to school <laughs> in the 70s and <laughs> You know. Yeah. Well, and that was that was our college car. Yeah. Right in Berkeley, of all places, like not yeah. known as a great know. commuting city, like <laughs> for but temperamental yeah. and Italian supercars. I don't know. I think uh, upwards of in the mills. I think like one uh, one maybe, something. Maybe click the next post. I feel like it was more I than. It... Do I say it there? No. You no. congratulated him on the cell. Okay. Okay. God, I can't remember. At least yeah, one point seven. It, it was. It was over. Yeah. 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 But anyway. still, anyway. spending time with it downtown, like, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. That was that was a fun day. We actually had a homeless man throw a water bottle at us, yeah. and we were like, "All right, that's a wrap." <laughs> like yeah. So, just, yeah. So, I was yeah, just I talking mean, to somebody getting. Oh no, that was somebody else. Different podcast. Sorry. Different story about some crazy person in the desert doing weird things. So. <laughs> So I, I guess the best thing, it may be not photographers or a day and something else that night, but maybe we we live with two different masks is the best way to say it. Yeah, okay. Kind of lives, right? Like outdoor camping. Yeah. It's kind of nice because it gives us that like break from not necessarily work, but maybe from the city, just the hustle and bustle of like doing commercial shoots and then yeah. like yeah. bam, yeah. bam, bam. And then we're like, we're going camping. This is what yeah. we need right now. Yeah. Well, and, and you've been doing it for a while. Uh, yeah. we started doing it in like what's like 2015, 14, maybe. I think maybe 14. I, I think that makes you OG in the space right now. <laughs> like, you've been doing, <laughs> you've got seven years of experience. Like, yeah, that's, everybody else is like, they started pandemic day one, or like, what can we do? Yeah, like, let's get out of this house. Um, we started just like having a ground tent and we just took our just regular daily mm -hmm. sedan that we had. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we were like, you know what? We need something bigger. And it'd be nice to have something with more space. If we ever need like to load up stuff for production, I, we got yeah. it. And then it then we heard became... about this thing called public land. They're like, oh my gosh, public land. So we need four by four sometimes. <laughs> that, 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 like, that like just oh, like completely opened up things. And then we were starting to look at land cruisers first. We were looking at like yep. 80 series. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wait, we can't afford fifteen thousand dollars at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone turned me on to a Montero, yeah. and next thing you know, so that's that one. Yeah, we bought yeah. that thing for five thousand dollars. Yeah. See, and I think Jeff got his for like thirty five hundred bucks. Like, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. And then, it's, and then, deal. if you can't afford Land Cruiser, you end up in a Montero or like first gen Sequoia. Like your same kind of money, mm -hmm. you get a little more horsepower to the Sequoia, but yeah, yeah, definitely. So I yeah, always tell heated and cool yeah, seats. Yeah, I always tell people <laughs> that it's better featured than a Forerunner and some Land Cruisers because Wait, did you say yeah. heated and cooled seats? Yeah, well, heated actually. Heated don't have seats. Cooled. Okay. Uh, rear diff lock. Rear diff lock, stock, and then cup holders everywhere, and then the the rear bench, the middle bench seat, where yeah, yeah, the passenger bench seat it reclines as well. Oh right, you can kind of lean. And back. they yeah. have armrests on the in the back seat with cup holders yeah so that's like like 1997 yeah. when it came out that was like <laughs> what featured... yeah yeah so i had a 94 land cruiser yeah <laughs> and i didn't have any of that <laughs> 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 I, didn't even, I didn't even have airbags yet in 94 like it was the next year oh. that toyota started putting airbags yeah. in so like i drove that thing for God, three years as a daily just hoping yeah. nobody stopped in front of me like i was oh. like I, it was the kind that had Land Cruiser printed on the steering wheel. So like, yep. yep. If I died, we knew how it was going to be. Like I was going to be <laughs> wearing it. <laughs> oh my god! That was branded onto your chest. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So we've had, we've had, we still have that actually. Yeah, we saw. Yeah, because that was the photo I grabbed was your most recent yeah, Instagram yeah, so on Gone Dirt, and <laughs> and then we, we we love it still. And yeah, yeah, it's fully built out. There's only two seats in it, so like we we're just talking about the rear seats, but those were taken out like pretty pretty <laughs> early on. It was just like fully 
built in for just storing, cooking. We have yeah. like a slide out kitchen. Yeah, that's the one I was hunting for because I knew that I remember I read one of the posts and Limber was like, uh, I miss this kitchen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a weird to... like we love the land cruiser that we're in right now, but the kitchen in the in the Montero is so much better. It's like it's like it's like it's you could spread out and it's great. Well, you're standing outside on the ground versus yeah. in here. Yeah. You're like you're yeah. in your little tiny home, yeah. right? You got to be a little yeah. more gentle. You could bust the corners of the paint yeah. and stuff. And we are in our toupee <laughs> right now. Um, we're packing for for a trip, so we were like, let's just do it in here. Yeah. That's that's fantastic, and that's why the dogs are like, let me in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, don't They're leave like, with us. <laughs> you're in my house already, mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I found some image of the back, but oh, you're, yeah. this is so this is something that at work, we don't have a setup yet where you could install it in the back. So we work on uh, transit vans. And so like, uh -huh. this is something I'm the lead engineer and I have been discussing quite a bit is I want to pull kitchen at the back. And he's like, yeah, we don't have that yet. I was like, I understand that, but let's talk and discuss this a little more. <laughs> yeah, It's really nice whenever you're outside and camping, because it gives you the opportunity to really instead of living inside so much when you're on the road, it makes you go outside mm -hmm. and have yeah. all of your things outside yeah. in your chairs. Cause whenever you have this, we've realized that yeah. now that we have this interior space, like it's very easy to melt into this little couch and just look outside the window and be like, Oh, it's so pretty. And then I'm just going to keep reading my book in my little shelter. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually not getting as much of the experience outside then. So I, I would say the, the troopy has definitely spoiled us where we're not outside, outside, even though we're outside, as much as when we were in the Montero because, okay, so I always tell people that the Montero is a 50-50 vehicle okay. because you're 50% outside and uh, no, actually, no, it's 80-20. It's right? 80, so it's 80% 80, 80 outside and 20% inside. Yeah. And then the, like and then the fifth, the trippy is like 50-50. And because you have like that 50-50, you're like, oh, it's ever so slightly chilly. I could just go inside. <laughs> right. And then the fact that we have like a heater in here and then like yeah. completely like it, it, they like weakened us, right? Yeah, it did weaken <laughs> us. We used to do like 15 degree nights in the Montero and be like, all right, we can do it. We'll just go <laughs> under the sleeping bag and make it through the night. Yeah, <laughs> It'll yeah. be worth it to see the snow in the morning. And yeah. then now we're like 40. Let's just pump the heater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie because I am very much the same way using vans from work. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, gasoline power heater, you set the uh -huh. thermostat to yeah. 72 and I take my pillow and my blanket and I go to bed. I don't, yeah. I don't now I will say it's nice because if I take all of the kids, I don't have to make sure I have a mummy bag for each one yeah, like and literally true. it's just a pillow and a blanket so yep yep yeah we, we, we don't pack any really heavy winter blankets either because of that yeah it's yeah. It, it's weird but... I, I did wake up in the snow one morning super excited for that heater <laughs> <Right? laughs> and i didn't have to get out. my my favorite thing always has been i want to be able to get out of bed uh-huh be able to get in the driver's seat yeah yeah. Use, yeah use the facilities if i need to but like i don't really want to be out out i just want to be yeah. and even in like bad situations that's why kind of my brain went there but in reality it's more just pure laziness it's pretty much why we got the troopy to be honest we wanted something because like our our pop top you can do it from the inside so we never have to exit the vehicle if we don't need to or if we're taking down then we're just like jumping the seats and out yeah yeah i mean even some camps we've rolled up to a really really dusty camp and just to sleep for the night and we looked outside and we're like yeah no we're not getting out so i just climbed <laughs> to the back. so i'm not sure if actually you can see so right behind me right here yeah uh oh, is, the is the latch that's inside and the reason why we chose this pop top is because of the latch it latches inside, inside and not okay. outside and because we have a pass-through technically so we could never leave the vehicle to open up the pop top dude that's fantastic yeah, so there are, there are other pop tops that have outside one. It's, it is nice, but yeah, that's kind of the main selling point for this Ooh, one. I think I found an interior tour, tour on the Instagram. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I yep. love that you guys have posted all this. It's very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was right after we finished. So we got the Troopy in December of 2021? 2021? We, we, we took the delivery 2020. Okay, yeah. and then in 2020. One, we built it out in Texas. My family has a car audio shop down there and they helped me build cabinets. I was like, hey, Justin, my brother. And I was like, you can build sub boxes. Can you build cabinets? <laughs> and yes, so yes, like, you can. Piracy on that thing. It was three months straight, just like every day. Oh my gosh. Dude, it's so great. 
Yeah, we love it. The windows are so awesome. Yeah, yeah. You, you use my favorite term for this stuff is because they're just glorified tiny homes. <laughs> like they're uh-huh. not... <laughs> it totally is. Yeah, yeah. As much as it's like spacious and fun and like whatever, uh-huh. like and like rugged off road, like it's just a mobile tiny home, guys. <laughs> oh, it totally is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like if if somehow we could run uh, AC off grid on this thing, that would be like. <laughs> That's what would make it perfect. And that's when you come talk to me about a van. (laughs) (laughs) I have a DC powered air conditioner from Dometic. (laughs) I have a lithium setup. (laughs) I mean, it's going to, it's going to cost you a lot, but yeah. 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 That's uh, it's funny that you pointed out like all of those extra creature comforts, like making you a little softer for it, but at the same time, like, I, I think those things also then make you more prone to going to use them. Like it, it does make it a little more functional. Like, it's, uh-huh. like you're like, Oh, it's going to be 15 out. Like doesn't matter anymore. I got a heater. Like, let's go. Right. Like, right. Right. Yeah. For sure. yeah. We definitely don't think about like, like weather isn't an issue anymore. Like temperature outside is an issue unless it's really, really hot. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's a, that's a, the other thing. But if it's like 15 degrees, like you said, like, Oh, let's just go because we it's not a it's not an issue and we can sleep comfortably and then we can still experience outside and come inside to warm up whenever we need to. And like that in itself is like, yeah, it softens you, but then it also conditions you like, okay, I can handle this heat or this cold <laughs> and do things outside and we can do it and yeah. enjoy it and come back to a space and then like do redo it again. Yeah. Yeah. How right. often does someone tell you it's a dry heat? <laughs> oh. <laughs> in arizona yeah that's all i think of is arizona when exactly <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were in flagstaff in may and it was like oh it was, it was like 70s 80s i was expecting it to be like a little little warm i was cold because uh-huh. there was no humidity and there was like a 40 mile an hour wind blowing the whole time oh, so yeah. i spent the whole show wearing pants and a sweatshirt <laughs> oh was, you're at expo oh. yeah yeah at expo west i was like this i didn't expect that at all i mean i packed appropriately because i knew we were going to wyoming in may so like i had warmer stuff but i didn't Uh expect to wear it in arizona luckily you had it to be honest yeah yeah Yeah. like if i'd only been in for the flex show i might not have had all that cold weather gear with me i'd I'd have been shopping that's what i would have been like (laughs) there's stuff at the show to buy it would have been yeah i was gonna say even though we've been conditioned for this car those that are listening i don't want you guys to think that you need all of these things in order to get outside you absolutely do not need that don't need it yeah if you want to yeah. sleep in your car go for it if you want a ground yeah. tent make it happen it is a freaking blast yeah. just to get outside and be in nature well i was i always loved the reset feeling after i like after i come back like uh-huh. what whatever i've done with it like it there's just a i don't know calm's the right word but like i don't feel like I've just been pummeled with stuff all weekend. Like I was just outside. I mean, nature, nature resets your nervous system. Yeah. So it's going to come out feeling refreshed and rejuvenated and ready to take on whatever's next. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a Japanese uh, word, right? Shirin Yaku or something like that. Mm, and I'm it, definitely bad at pronunciation in Japanese. So it, it, it basically means forest healing. And it's like okay. an actual bathing. word for so forced bathing. Forced yeah. bathing. Yeah. And like when you're in the forest, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You instantly hear it and you feel it and it's kind of crazy to think that's a thing and then you go like oh those those japanese are kind of like you could sense why they have a, they think there's a spirit in everything right or right. they yeah they have that yeah so, that appreciation yeah because you're like out them. there and then you see this glorious tree and you're like wow it's amazing right yeah. that was my uh my favorite part of watching the james may series in japan uh-huh. is how much he didn't spend time where we see everything in like tokyo and all that stuff yeah like, yeah again, he did his episodes there, but just getting farther out. And then, uh, let's see, Australian guys, Mighty Car Mods end up going over to Japan quite a bit. And then they, mm-hmm. they then go to separate places, completely different from what we're used to seeing all the yep. time. Yep. I definitely, I definitely love that stuff. Nice. Um, I need to watch the James May one. <laughs> I love James May. Have you not it. seen that one yet? No, so. we haven't no. seen it. We need to watch oh, it. We're huge on- Top Gear or old Top Gear fans, but yeah, great so it's, it, it's on Amazon Prime and it's James May, our man in Japan. Um, okay. I want to say it's like eight episodes. Each one's like oh. an hour long and it is <clears throat> absolutely delightful. Okay. I'm adding it to our, our yeah. downloads yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. And they yeah. just did a new one, which I think is James May, our man in Italy. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Okay. Yeah. Him he's, well. yeah. He's been, if Clarkson's on a farm, James. Yeah, Clarkson's the world. on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, side note, that, that, 
farm f- uh, stuff is the best thing on TV. <laughs> it's such a good, <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah. I'm, I'm really interested in season two because I think I've seen stuff lately that's been like his farm has been like an utter disrepair or something like the storms oh, or the heat. Like, so I'm really kind of interested to see how season two went. But you're coming from an ag based location. Like, uh, yeah. I thought season one was delightful. <laughs> it yeah, was, it was fantastic. Yeah. And then we're both Team Caleb. So yeah, there's we're that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, nobody's going on jeremy's side for this show like we're all gonna <laughs> either listen to caleb or get out of the way yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the the bit where he throws his keys into the field though i was like all right hold on there's got to be a pa hunting those things down because those right? things are gonna yeah. be gone forever like yeah as soon as he pitched keys i was like mm. <laughs> okay back on track <laughs> yeah. um so you guys travel with the dogs full time well, when you travel, you take the dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they come with us pretty much everywhere. Yeah. And, they, yeah. and they're like fully troopy trained now. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. They're very well traveled. They have mileage points, all that good stuff. Yeah. So they <laughs> both fly with us too whenever we do fly. Yeah. Okay. And, then, and then they're very like, they're so used to the, the troopy by now. And they both jump in to the back without like, sometimes we have a step and sometimes we don't, but they both could hop in without. Yeah. They, yeah literally this bench we're sitting on is basically our big dog bed because it is theirs whenever yeah. we're living out of they it are. yeah so they're they're that, that, that's kai and stella they're both 15 pounds or no kai is the the shiba is 15 and stella is like 17 almost 17 okay yeah um and so for us it's perfect for their size because they're so small um mm-hmm. that they just they're not they don't take much space yeah but they get really excited like the big dog kaya is very much of a hunter she's a shiba inu so she's very um she's a japanese breed bred to hunt like um weasels like weasels and yeah. stuff like that yeah. and so she's very on it like with the lizard hunting with the squirrel hunting and <laughs> stella has, is absolutely clueless has no interest but she likes to follow <laughs> her around so they're so, pretty entertaining <laughs> so i so kaya is 400 percent a hunter Okay. And she has, if if somehow we could have like kill stamps on her, we she would probably be like six <laughs> deep oh that gosh. we know of. Okay. Like, um, we had a rat or a mouse once in our uh, in our Montero when we were when we were traveling in the Montero, and um, we tried for like two nights to get this rat out. We had traps out and everything like that. And then at the time in the Montero, they both slept upstairs with us, like in okay. the roof, right? But. The, that last night we were like we were the third night we we're like okay we're gonna keep kaya downstairs in the car overnight and then maybe she'll get it right and so throughout the night we just hear we <laughs> feel like the, 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 the oh no <laughs> truck shake <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I, I i get up in the morning open the back right and then drops the uh, we had like sticky traps out and yeah. then there was this mouse on a sticky trap yeah. and then like it was trying to get itself out so okay. it's still... <laughs> not going <laughs> was, it, was it doing the coyote thing it's gnawing a limb off to get yeah. away from the trap it was gnawing so it was gnawing the, the 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 glue of the sticky trap so oh. it was really sad but like basically like Kaya scared it into a corner in onto yeah. a sticky trap and so yeah i had a she was very proud and then she was like give me my prize yeah <laughs> That so story, yeah, I had, that story I had ended of, so much better than I was hoping. <laughs> so I, I had disposed of the mouse, and then she go. We let her out to do her thing in the morning, and literally after she does her thing, she goes to find a tree stump and starts digging her way through this tree stump, right? And then next thing you know, she finds another mice. Like oh so that gosh. night, she had two. That's like two stamps on her on her kill, kill screen. So. Wild. <laughs> I can't take her anywhere. <laughs> well, and see, that's where I went with like kids and destroying stuff. And you're like, we left her underneath there. And so we felt the movement. I was like, and the inside was a bloody house. Like when you got done, like I expected like horror movie scene that oh, ended way God. better than I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, and then building out the troopy, we tried to mouse proof as best we could. So, oh my God. yeah, that's them. Good girls. Yeah. We love streams. <laughs> And then, yeah. so Stella is like is we, we think she's a golden retriever dash hound. That's what we've been told. And okay. and yeah. so that's her size and that's her personality. So her personality is a hundred percent golden. Yeah. She's goofy. It's <laughs> just, just bubbly, bubbly happy. yeah, happy, yeah. always to please. So yeah. Cute. Plays ball, goes in the water. They're dog absolute things. opposites. Ab- yeah. <laughs> it's so 
I, I might just share dog photos the rest of the night. I... <laughs> <laughs> it's so and, good. <laughs> and then and then Stella, the bigger the stick, the more proud she's she walks. Oh yeah. yes. So she's had a stick that's like 15 feet long that like she could hold up six but still she's dragging it she's like i'm getting it (laughs) she's still moving it and that counts yep 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 so yeah and that's like what's great about where we go like we go to public land and so the dogs are able to really just like enjoy um just being out i mean we keep them on leash whenever we we feel the need to but Uh whenever we're out there alone and we're pretty sad they just have a good time i love public land like dude it's so great yeah, it's the best thing. Like any more tax money I could allocate to public land, that's like take it. Like whatever you could do to preserve it, to protect it, to clean it up if we need to. Yeah. Because it's getting pretty bad out there actually now. Yeah. But yeah. Have you guys uh have you guys found the uh the gambler five hundred guys before from up in Oregon? No. So they, they that was like a little rally, had to get a car and it the the more it was not acquainted for like off-road travel the better mm-hmm. the car so like there's a lot of 500 hundred dollar corollas rolling around up there okay I've about but it. they kind of so spun fun. that off um into like a, a wilderness defense initiative basically so okay. very very along the lines of like tread lightly and things like that okay. but they're they're literally just trying to pick up trash that they find on public land so i think oh, they're great. going by yeah. um sons of smoky now which sounds very biker <laughs> gang um <laughs> I hope they have jean vests. Oh my god. Yeah. I haven't seen <laughs> jean vests. I've, I've yeah. <laughs> they do have merch. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I was like, I've got a hat around here somewhere, and of course it's not gonna be in my stack of hats. That stinks. Oh I'll have to look it up for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Good sons, for them. Sons of smoky. Like, but they go to public land and so they go in with like fairly decent pickups and things like that. And like some of the stuffs they pull out are like old fiberglass boats from the seventies uh-huh. that somebody uh-huh. has just dumped and they're like, we're getting rid of this today. And they'll, yeah, yeah. it's gotten to a point where they've got enough mojo going that like local law enforcement will then like not ticket them for trying to transport this thing to the dump. Like, Oh, that's really good. Actually kind of yeah. help them out yeah. a little bit. They, yeah. they know what they're doing. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that stuff. So yeah, well, <laughs> Plus, I, it's a I, fun I, name. It, yeah, yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. You guys look like you get just about everywhere. Um, I've seen red rocks and photos. I've seen mountains. Uh-huh. Where, where do you like to go? Gosh, everywhere. I mean, it, it goes in yeah. seasons. I, right? I, I mean, it's kind of like it, we go with the seasons for sure. Yeah. Right. It's like beginning of the year it's 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 snow season so sometimes we go to play in the snow and then as it progresses in spring you go like desert and then summer you go mountains and then yeah. fall comes back you go back into the mountains some more or in back in the desert it just really depends yeah, yeah. yeah. and then like or like early last early this uh winter we did baja and that was like something we've never done early in winter mm-hmm. and that was that was incredible and yeah. we're dying to go back again it was yeah. beautiful we drove all the way to the bottom and then circled around and came back up and it was yeah it was awesome. We'd wake up and just would hear wells breaching and then we'd step out mm-hmm. and just watch them like plop in the water. And it was insane. Yeah. Almost every campsite had wells. Yeah. And then, and then there was that. And then like, sometimes we'd wake up to the sound of like, it almost sounded like a distant gunshot, like a big caliber gunshot, but it was just whales slapping their, uh, their arms oh. into the water, like all morning long. Just, just like, it just echoes like, and it's so it's amazing out there. So Dude, that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And then and then they're close too. Like I would say like maybe oh. a quarter mile from the shore. Maybe. Like you could if you wanted to, you could paddle board out to them. Okay. It's amazing. Like like Baja is like um, incredible. Um <laughs> this shot. I'm sorry. I just did a, a recent uh, elementary school visit, so I I feel this shot more than <laughs> 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 all the stools are so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Vietnam. Um, okay. So- we very much love and it's so fun to explore for like the food culture and everything else and the moment we see plastic stools or it's like a special place in our home it is a special place <laughs> right, the best right. food in vietnam comes from plastic stools you do okay. not like yeah I'm, like, I'm adding that to my list because i had yeah. you shared that thing with freddie wong earlier today with the three and a half stars <laughs> and i said that to my wife too and she was cracking up because our our uh, our close friends are chinese so i'll send okay. it to him later <laughs> oh, nice. 
Like, tell me how accurate this is. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, but basically all ethnic food, I would say that applies to everything. So like, for those that don't know, there was this TikTok that came out and it basically said the best Chinese food that you want to find is Chinese food that's three and a half stars. Because if it's lower than three and a half stars, that means the food's bad. And right. then if higher than three and a half stars, that means people like the service and maybe not the food. Right. Right. So you find this middle ground. And if it's a three and a half, it's probably really good. Perfect. So, crappy so, service, but the food over outweighs the crappy service. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep, yep. So, like, yeah. yeah. But, but, and I shouldn't say crappy. I would say like uh, a level of service that Americans are not accustomed to. That's yes, not exactly. actually, it doesn't yeah. mean it's actually bad. That means they just no. leave you alone. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. It's definitely 100%. a cultural thing. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the best food is always is always like I when we are in small towns, like when we're traveling and we hop on Google Maps, you're like, I never look for four to five star stuff. It's always like two and a half to three and a half range. <laughs> it's the sweet spot. <laughs> it's it is the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. usually places that like locals go eat rather than if you get the four and a half, five and a half or five star places, that's always like tourists or like people out of town, like, oh, this place has really good vibes and it's got pretty good food, but the vibes are great and they had great service. And of course they're gonna give it really good service, right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. You're still gonna find good places that are four or five stars. You, you are. can't like yeah. say that. No, 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 no. Places... It doesn't always apply, yeah. but yeah. like it really depends on the food. Yeah. Right. Like Definitely. brunch, you want to look for four and a half to five stars. <laughs> <laughs> So the alcohol can definitely <laughs> sway that one too. <laughs> but if you're dealing with like taquerias, you're dealing with like Mexican food and right. Chinese food. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was your quote on it was like, this applies to taquerias too. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did you guys handle the dogs in the sand in Baja? Um, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't an issue. So we yeah. have the Stella ha is this magical fur on her. She gets like just filthy of sand and then the, the moment she dries it's gone really yeah it like just falls off i don't know what i don't know if she has like some sort of like energy that she like just emits <laughs> out and it just like <laughs> like literally oh there's like all that sand's gone the moment she's dry yeah dude, and, dude, that's and awesome kaya, kaya's not an issue because one she hates water and yeah. then her doesn't hold on to anything yeah so she's so in her mind, she's always dry. And then so all of it would just brush right off her. If it, yeah. if, it if it actually got to her, it would brush yeah. off. Yep. Yep. So yep. like, even with mud, she's like, I'm not touching that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the, the picture earlier, earlier. It was two ways to cross the stream. And she was on the wood completely out of anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Stella was in the water. Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. 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 Two completely opposite personalities. Yeah. Dude, but. that's so great. Nice have both. For sure. Yeah. So this is actually back to back episodes because the Newmans we had on last week, they went to Baja uh, for three months in the winter too with Barry, um, their adventure chocolate lab. And they uh -huh. didn't realize that Barry had been bleached by the sun while they were down there. Oh. And so we were back in Flagstaff all together at the expo. Uh -huh. And then other chocolate labs that would walk up and Barry got out of the van and they were like, our dog changed colors. Like they had no idea. Oh. Barry got sun in. He yeah. did. He literally did. <laughs> so we, we out, yeah, we, we gave him a hard time about it quite a bit. So that's awesome. <laughs> Barry didn't mind. So he's, he was pretty chill. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So the trip you guys took down to Baja, you guys didn't go by yourselves, did you? No, oh, we have, we have some really good friends uh, that we've met through the internet. Um, and, and uh, so let's go from Wonder. left to right. So the, the left most is truthy. And then that's Amy uh, from uh, Struthy from Holiday at Sea. Holiday and at then sea. Amy's with Tight Loop Fly. And then Mac is with Bound for Nowhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we all just camped all around Baja together. And it yeah. was so much fun. Um, our friends, Struthy and Peter, they're in the Volkswagen van. And they knew where to take us. And we're really excited to share like mm -hmm. their moments with Baja with us. Yeah. So we just kind of like all stood together. And yeah went surfing and yeah. ate really good food it was awesome so many tacos <laughs> and so we always have this funny story about all, all actually so this applied to all of all of everyone every single couple that we're really good friends with now um uh there's a story and we basically when we all met each other we each had our own exit strategy just in case we did not like the person and this oh, is really like, yeah, just because we we we've only talked to them from the internet and like yeah. sometimes you meet somebody, it's like it's not the same vibe. And so each couple had their own separate exit strategy if things weren't gonna work out. 
<laughs> this like, was pre Baja. This is not going to Baja. Yeah, this okay. is how we, when we all met. Like meeting. Yeah, yeah meeting. So yeah. S- similar to like blind date style friend call with the emergency type thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but no. We but luckily, were... yeah, the the energy was like everyone's was, amazing. Yeah, and they're they're like what we consider like like family now. They're they're yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. It it is funny how that happens. How you can find a collection of people who and I I have a group of gentlemen that I go out with and nobody quite has the same family life but we know everyone's politics slightly aligned kind of thing like no uh-huh. one's crazy far out but that's the kind of thing is like once you kind of settle into that i don't really want to add other people to it something like <laughs> definitely yeah. willing to meet new and camp with others but at the same time yeah. like those guys i know i can go i can show up i can bring the kids the, yeah. the kids aren't going to irritate yeah. too many people yeah. like i know it's going to be completely chill and calm it's, it's, it's like it's like those relationships where you have and it's like a no effort relationship Mm-hmm. those are the best like like you just know the energy and then and then it's mutual on both sides and it's like you just show yeah. up and then it's kind of like those whenever you see a friend that you haven't seen in a long time and when you talk to them it sounds like it, when you're talking like you guys haven't skipped a day right so that's my best friend lives in salt lake uh-huh. we see him once every two to three years yeah we talk like maybe three times a year no offense, okay. mike sorry um uh-huh. but that's it it's that exact thing yeah. it's nothing that's like we catch up and then we just go right back to doing our lives. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. that's amazing. Though. That is amazing. It's good to yeah. have the community where it's just you just fall right back in the place. No, it's great. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you have the dogs on paddle boards. <laughs> oh yeah, they love. Well, Kaya loves paddle boarding. Stella, I mean, she looks like she's loving it there. Kaya's ready to jump off the shore. Yeah, I said Kaya's ready to move. <laughs> yeah, she loves to jump. Oh, Stella looks like such a good girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so clear and calm that morning. I could see like all the coral beneath me, all the fish. It was pretty wild. Our friend actually, they dive or just went swimming in that ocean and they um, spearfish and we had um, really good fried fish. Yeah, I think we had a trigger fish or a trumpet fish. Trumpet fish, yeah. And, and there was another fish. It was, it was the like same, a, yeah, same day. Yeah, so, same day. so, I, I, so I made fish and chips like um that day like they 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 literally came out of the water looking like james bond yeah. with a fish on a spear and then i was like i'm gonna cook with that and then i made uh and i just yeah it was so simple but it was delicious yeah it was yeah so good yeah i think there's like it's a it should this there should be some photos around there of the fish of the of the of the fish yeah. and that i cooked mm. as well Ooh. but um but yeah that, it's it's great so definitely cooking is a is an emphasis for you guys it became an emphasis, yeah, for sure. Um, I think like the first couple of like trips that we were doing, we were eating what was typical of camp food. We would eat like cornbread and and chili and hot dogs and hamburgers and things like that. Sandwiches. And we still do sandwiches. And we still do sandwiches because it's really yeah. easy. But when we were doing longer and longer trips, we were doing weekends. We started off with weekends yeah. and we came longer and longer. And then as we were doing longer trips, like week trips, two week trips, uh, we were missing food from home. Right. Yeah. And to us is L.A. and L.A. And then that can that and then L.A. is just this giant melting pot of everything like Ethiopian, Vietnamese, Mexican, Chinese, Taiwanese. Um, literally country, you right? have one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we missed a lot of that. And so I cook at home. I'm the one that cooks at home. She does all the truck stuff, like all the truck stuff. Um, and I do all the cooking. Uh, and so I started like, OK, I'm going to see what I could do to transform the food that we crave to make it somewhat campable and it just kind of became a thing and yeah dude it's awesome because i am awful at cooking so <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> I, I married a new york italian woman and it has not disappointed in the least unless it's <laughs> like all the kids are like dad you're doing it tonight i was like i'm so sorry guys i'm no i'm bad at this <laughs> so do you get sunday gravy every so often sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to cut down on that a little <laughs> no it's a funny thing we joke about like uh she cooks i clean like mm-hmm. that's that's kind of how it's worked for us over the yeah years. yeah it's nice to have these little trade-offs too for sure like Lumberg cooks i do a lot of the cleaning i do a lot of the truck maintenance and so yeah that, uh, it. that's that's actually the is uh, this the fish that's yeah, if you that's scroll the through fish. that yeah yeah so so can't Stella, those yeah. Fish. Stella waiting them yeah <laughs> Well, Stella was like, that's a snack. I'm in. Yeah. yeah. That's Mac. <laughs> now, I, now I feel like this is my youth because my uncle is a huge bass fisherman. So the amount of fish I've seen filleted. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. 
dude, it is great with fries. So with there's fries. Your chips. Yeah. Yeah. Had potatoes. Yeah. So, so someone had someone luckily had potatoes and just cut them up and yeah. And then we none of us had flour, but, okay. but what we did have is like so Shruti, um, she's Indian and so she has a lot of things that I normally don't have. And luckily she had rice powder. Okay. And then use rice flour for the batter and it worked perfectly. It was even better actually. It was crispy. It was really nice. Yeah. So great. Yeah. 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 And you don't have to worry about the freshness because you literally got it out of the ocean. So. Yeah. 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 It's such a blast feeding people too. It's yeah. just nice to be able to, you know, have our spread out and be like, come eat. <laughs> like we've done right? cream barbecue, we've done shabu shabu. Like yeah. it's always fun to mix it up and like get people excited about trying different things. Yeah. I mean, like one of the reasons why a lot of people travel is through food and we that's that's for us too, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Kaya too. <laughs> <laughs> so for the audio listener, it's Kaya sitting at the table with a meal in front of her. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't look like it's a meal that's meant for her, but <laughs> <laughs> It's actually all vegetables, so she would never want to eat it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so because she's a she, aren't they normally like a little more aloof or is she always just full on game on? Let's go. Oh, no, she's super intelligent. I swear she's like a human in her next life. Like she's ready to level up. Um, she's the oh. she's Enzo from Art of Racing in the Rain. She's the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, she's very just aware and independent. Um sometimes can be a little bossy like she's very sassy um <laughs> but very intelligent like you mm -hmm. tell her something she knows what you're talking about it's kind of wild yeah, yeah sure. I, a... <laughs> I, I have one of those <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's he's napping now but no like he's he's a britney mix and so um we're not even sure if that's like actually what his true dad is. So he could just be a mutt of all mutts, but he is the smartest dog we've ever had. Exactly what you're talking about. Would you, when you repeat phrases to him, uh -huh. I'm like, will you get out of the grass and eat your food? And he'll yeah. wander over and go right to his food bowl. Like yeah. just, so and after the third time, he'll finally eat it. <laughs> <laughs> just like having another kid. But sometimes Kaya talks back. Yeah, she does. She'll bark back. She'll be like, she'll do her yeah. little howl, her hello. <laughs> does she do any like uh does she do it where she just flares her like jowls where it's like a like a almost like oh, a like hush a yeah like a <laughs> yeah she does that all the time, all the time. So, that's, sassy. so sassy that's how he talks yeah <laughs> maybe that's what's in there i don't know he's such a fun dog so fun they sound <laughs> so very similar in personality that's hilarious well and so it, work is very pet friendly and so like there are a number of dogs running around and so like I'll take him and anybody who comes in who also has their dog for a tour or if they want to design a van, their dogs are normally like, no, thank you. And he's like, no, we're here. We should play now. <laughs> and the other dogs are like hard pass. And so I have to like stash him in another coworker's office so we can then actually do the work mm -hmm. and let their dog be calm the whole time. So Aww, uh, yeah. poor dude, he just wants to be stoked yeah. and hang out. Exactly. <laughs> So I, I still haven't got him and Barry together yet, though. That's my that's high on my list. Okay. Uh, they're very, very good dogs to play. <laughs> and of course, now I, I've got a picture of Stella just completely yawning. <laughs> <There she is. laughs> like I said, it's a giant dog bed. We're covered in hair when we're on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely get it. <laughs> so well, my what? old job, he used to go to work with me every day. And so that's um, like my office key was always dog hair. <laughs> oh no yeah we live in it almost bathe in it i mean after our showers we usually have hair on us immediately oh, for sure. yeah. but well, they sleep least... upstairs which is great so we sleep upstairs and we're like okay you do your thing it's the one spot there. that doesn't have dog hair yeah, yeah. it's per it's like yeah they haven't been up there yet uh you throw stella up there when i wake up oh right 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 she right, likes right. to cuddle yeah but <laughs> Well, sweet. It looks like you, I just found the paid partnership with the Dometic one. So uh, I love that stuff too. Oh yeah. Dometic's amazing. Yeah. yeah. They're really good to us. Yeah. yeah. Their, their little, their little faucet here is a joke in the office because uh, one of the guys likes to do it as like a continuous loop fountain form, but it'll only do a liter at a time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so he's got it set up. And so at Mountain West, I was like, homie, can I get a, like a software update? for that so it'll just go constant because he just wants the <laughs> he wants the zen noise of the water fountain in his office because oh, he, he just had a nalgene sitting there with like the the uh the fill tube into the same nalgene it was oh, coming out so that's so funny yeah sorry ian for sharing your water feature <laughs> <laughs> 
that that's that's like no joke one of the best products in that came out in overlanding in yeah. in recent years like 100%. not because we work with them or anything but like we see a lot of product and that one is legitimately a game changer yeah yeah and it's i would say it's so much so we we typically use the the larger dometic sinks that have like the the flip top uh, similar uh -huh. to what it looks like you have in the back of the troopy yep. um and then this came out and we, and we we were like hold on we need to we kind of reevaluate some things yeah because it yeah. saves so much space yeah so much 100 yeah. i've yeah. noticed a lot of people using those just magnetizing them to whatever their sink build out mm -hmm. is and then just like stacking it and we yeah. traveled with something similar in the montero for years and we were just like man this thing is like it was kind of like janky it so was we were janky, like yeah. you know it works yeah. but it'd be nice to have something better and then dometic came out with that and we were like that was everything we were envisioning but we didn't have to do any of it this is amazing <laughs> So right. you're like, I wish I'd had recorded that idea on a podcast ahead of time. So I could be like, <laughs> what's up, Dometic? Uh, yeah. No, they're they're absolutely great. So uh what and I, I've been asking this one lately, what is something that you wished you had known when you first started that you now know? Mm. 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 So in, in the education profession, this is now called wait time, where I'm allowing you time to think about your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think early on for me, I wish I knew the importance of a, of like ha, like easy water, like not drinkable water, but like water that you'd use to live, right? Yeah. And when we first started off, we would be like everyone else. We would go to a grocery store and buy those like what was it those 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 oh yeah those little white, things and like, with a pool tab and you pull it and it turns into a gravity like feed thing jugs. and then yeah. it's great and it works great for a little while and but then after a while like it just kind of gets old right yeah mm -hmm. and, then, cool. and then we started upgrading our water system over and over again and i always we so we always tell people like an easy water is the most important thing next to a fridge i would say water is more important than a fridge how many gallons do you roll with so we roll with 14 in the Troopy and we roll and then in the Montero 11. Okay. Yeah. We, we use six gallon jerry cans at work. And uh, part of the reason that is a lot of our clientele is a little advanced in age to be able to afford the fans. Yeah. Um, and that six gallon jerry can is about 50 pounds when it's full. Okay. So yeah. That's, that's kind of like where our mental math and also then it's removable. It's easier to cleanse and like, you can put it yeah. back in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I had a guy the other day who was like, I need 30 gallons of fresh water. And I was like, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> For how long? <laughs> we, we actually just watched a YouTube video of this couple and they went to Baja in their van and they have 40 gallons. And they say, and they said, Oh, we're on day 10 and we have to fill up with water now. And we're like, You use 40 gallons in 10, 10 days? days? Good lord. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So our 14-ish gallons, if we're really good with it, it lasts upwards of a week to week and a half yeah i did six six gallons for a week and but i didn't we we uh strategically play shower location so i never had to shower like out yeah. of the back of the van yeah. or anything like yeah. that which is uh we rarely yeah. shower when we're on the road <laughs> really we're disgusting <laughs> we're, I, we're I, back I to that low humidity that we were talking about earlier it's fine i, I right? think when, yeah. when we we're in baja we didn't shower till six weeks after the fact but we were going in the ocean yeah and things like that well, but we were rinsing our hair especially like the ocean i mean baja is not even like an excuse like when we go to the forest and we don't shower for two weeks it's like man we're getting pretty gross <laughs> <laughs> baby whites the two of you yeah baby whites yeah. uh, i will shout out um clean freak with a k okay those uh the newmans that i had last week they were like we love them so because they're I'll uh pet safe as well uh -huh. oh nice okay I haven't I, used them. Yeah, I haven't used them. But I, I will say that uh, the human body, um, after a certain while of not showering, it gets used to not showering. So after like about a week or a week and a half, you stop smelling as bad. Not okay. because you are used to it, because you're just like one is just your body's regulating itself. And then also your hair can only take so much grease. And so right. you stops being greasy after a certain amount yeah, of time too. Regulates. So it, you kind of like ungrossify yourself the longer you go <laughs> it's weird I love it. it's counterintuitive but it, it, it's totally like that's yeah, a thing so what you're what you're telling me is my experience as a camp counselor in estes park colorado in 2000 and the year 2000 i think um i was about three days short of achieving that state 
<laughs> yeah. So I'd say I'd say it's about a week. It really depends on a person, yeah. but about a week to a week and a half. I, I had gone four days without showering at camp. Uh-huh. And then it it and no one had said, like, dude, you smell. It was more the fact that I was just like, I need to take a shower. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. It happens. It, it happens. It picks up on you like yeah. day four yeah. for sure. Until yeah. you're like regulating. Until you yeah, like like yeah. four, five, six. It's really, yeah. really gross at six. And for some reason it hits this weird like point and you're like, it's not bad at yeah. anymore. Well, it's, it depends it's so like weird. the climate, of course. It really depends right. on climate yeah. for sure. More yeah. more humidity is definitely worse. <laughs> <laughs> This is but why I love like, doing this show because I have absolutely learned something tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it really depends on where you camp too. Because yeah. like, if you're in the desert, you're dusty every single day, and then that right. dust is different, right? Yeah. Rather as if you're in the Pacific Northwest, everything just feels clean all the time, yeah. right? You're not dusty. You always have clothes on, and so you things aren't getting dirty. Your feet aren't getting dirty, and things like that. Like whereas you're just dusty all the time in the desert. So what I heard is just keep changing your socks. I mean, you always Basically. change your socks, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the most important part. Yeah, yeah. Foot health. Yeah, and <laughs> wool goes a long way out here. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy. On, on the Instagram page, there's a second troopy. What, what's the story with that one? Oh, it's, are you talking about the docking that we I did? Don't know. That's a of ours, actually. His name's Ernesto, and he's with okay. Overland Americas. Um, he also has a troopy. It's incredible. Um, we were building ours out pretty much around the same time. Yeah, so- he actually cut the roof of our troopy um, to install the pop top because he's certified to install these. Yeah. Okay. So he has a 2020, um, no, 2019, well, he, uh, somewhere yeah. around there, uh, VDJ troopy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Dude, that's so great. And it, it's such a dream to drive. It's so nice compared yeah. to ours. So- ours is so slow. It's a what year is yours? Well, it's a 90 ours is a 94 okay so you you went with like legit <laughs> uh import laws where he is. yeah so i always yeah. joke like yeah. so last year I, I was i the most dad joke thing ever maybe it's a little more than dad joke but like i always tell people like oh yeah we have our troopy it's barely legal <laughs> <laughs> that's a dad joke yeah <laughs> And it's always old white guys that come up to us at the gas stations and talk to them. And I tell them that and they just die. They just exactly. Die. Yeah. It's a hundred. Dude, I laughed hard. <laughs> so we're, we're, like, we're like three years away now. It's not quite barely legal anymore. It's, it's past that. So. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Yeah. Well, sweet. Uh, we have gone our time guys. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. It yeah. was really fun to chat. It was yeah, fun. well, we will, uh, now that we've established this, we'll, we might do the follow-up and like, you know, three, six months kind of thing. We'll see what new adventures you've been on. If you've sure. any, yeah. especially if you yeah. something that you want to promote. I will say that uh, gone, gondurton.com. Yep. Yeah, gone there's a, And then there's a, a whole article on how the troopies built. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and gondurton.com also has like quite okay. a few recipes on it yeah. as well. That's also true. That's that's I think where I saw more of the food stuff was on Gone Dirt as opposed to yeah. the Instagram yeah. page. Yeah. So. yeah. We'll have many stories soon. We leave for South America in two weeks. We're really excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sadly, we're not shipping. It's way too expensive to ship. We wanted the ship. Yeah. But container it, prices are very it's much too on expensive. the high. Yeah. So I fully understand that because I had I, I used to write listings for cars and bids. And so one of the guys on Cars and Bids turned me onto a bunch of like sites in like Croatia and somewhere in Serbia, I think, mm-hmm. to buy a lot of Nevas, uh-huh. um, super cheap. But then I started looking at shipping prices, <laughs> and even those <laughs> tiny lot of Nevas. It was like five times the amount I was going to spend on the vehicle just to then yeah. ship it back. Yeah. And I was like, I'll oh, wait till it calms South- down. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. We got lucky. We got the troopy in before those prices were going up. Yeah. So like we had it on a boat, like yeah. pretty much just before the like dock and everything mm-hmm. got crazy busy mm-hmm. at the port do you have a so completely side note before i go away do you know that the order status of if you order a brand new 70 series in australia do you know about that no so if you put in an order today to any 70 series could be a wagon could be a single cab dual cab troopy whatever the wait time is four years to never that is the official statement four from years Dakota. to never <laughs> <laughs> You may get it. You may not. Because th- th- there's all this talk that they're going to wipe out the 70 series. Yeah. 
But so, like Australia like lives off the 70 series. If they yes, didn't have 70 yes. series land cruisers, yeah, I yeah, think so the country shuts like, down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then majority of it is fleet sales, right? Off of yeah. like agricultural and mining and all that stuff and that's industry. So I don't know what's gonna happen if it goes away. But yeah, four years to never if you put in an order today. Man. And so, that's the official Toyota statement. Ho- ho- hopefully by then in the next 30 years, I can finally get mine. Is that what I heard? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's why I wish we'd adopt Canada's law and just have it be 15 years. I don't know why it has to be the 25 year rule. Like mm-hmm. I feel like it's way too much, but yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Agreed. Someday I've, I've always wanted a droopy. So I, I like, I like finding them online. Cause I was like seeing them before they're converted with like the bench seats down this. I was like, I can fit tons of kids along that. That'd oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, stock, it's supposed to hold 11 people. Right. Yeah. right? So, There's room enough to like separate the four of them. Even, so. <laughs> It'd be so fun to drive around with kids. <laughs> yeah. uh, you say that until you spend five minutes driving around with kids. <laughs> Especially if you've forgotten a device. Uh-huh. Oh no. <laughs> miserable. Absolutely miserable. I love all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the best is my seven-year-old he has an iphone connected to wi-fi and we have a suburban that has the wi-fi in it it's the 4g uh-huh. lte built in and wow. so for that that's like our long car trip vehicle and so um the other day he had to go do something and he was like who's taking me i was like mom's taking you and he was like crap i was like what is the big deal and he's like there's no wi-fi in that one he drives a sequoia and it doesn't have the wi-fi so it's like dude you need to kind of let it go a little bit i think you're a little soft if you can't handle the 20 minute ride well (sighs) you wait until how soft the overlanding world is going to be when everyone has starlink so there we're going to get to that point really soon but that's another conversation for another day exactly starlink and a wee boost like (laughs) awesome thank you so much guys Thank you, too. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun chatting with you. Yeah, it was really fun.